Today we're going to implement the ability to clear a line in our Tetris game. There are a bunch of different ways to make a Tetris game. Some people build their blocks out of individual squares and make that into an object. Since we went with using full blocks as our object, we're going to need to break those into individual pieces to clear a line. So I'm going to create a new sprite. And I'm going to load one of each colored block in the same order. So red is my first one. Double check our order. We have green, orange, blue, purple, aqua, yellow. Second one was green. Third one was orange. Fourth one was blue. Purple. Aqua. And yellow. Okay, the origin points for all of ours should be set to the middle, and our collision polygon should be set to the bounding box. Since all of our blocks are pushed in one pixel, we shouldn't have to modify any of these squares. If you click on animations, we'll change that speed to zero so that it does not cycle through them when the game is running. I'm going to make sure this is on my pieces layer also. I'm going to name this board block since these will be the blocks that become part of the board and everything else should be implemented in the code. Okay, so I'm going to first add a group. I'm going to name my group Block Conversion. That will be for converting my dead blocks into board blocks. So I'm going to add a variable to this. My first one's going to be row, which is a number. Make sure that's inside of my block conversion. I'm going to copy and paste that, and instead of row 2, I'm going to make that a column. So these should both be local variables inside of our block conversion group. Then I'm going to add a sub-event to my group. System, compare two values, I want to check if I have any dead blocks. So dead blocks dot count. If that is greater than zero. By doing this check, it will prevent us from running all of this code until we need to. Now we need to add a sub event. And this is going to be a for loop. We'll name this row. And we have 20 rows, so we're going to start at one and we're going to go to 20. And then we're going to have a sub event for that. Same thing, for loop, this is going to be for our column, and it's going to start at 1 and end at 10. These do not automatically take these numbers and put them into our variables. We're going to have to do add action system set value. I want my row to get the value of the loop index for my first loop. Copy, paste that, and I want column to get my loop index in the second loop. So now anywhere inside of these loops, the variable row will have my row and the variable call will have my column. Now I need to get a dead block if it exists in a particular row and column. So let's add a sub event to my loop. Since I have a loop inside of a loop and a new event inside of that loop, this is gonna repeat for every row and for every column inside of every row. So also be system, I want to pick overlapping point. I want to choose if a dead block is overlapping a point. So the X coordinate I'm going to check is column plus two, because I have two gray boxes on the edge of my board, times my block size, minus half a block size. So block size divided by two. So that'll check the dead center of a block. For my Y coordinate, since there are not two gray boxes at the top, I can just do row times the same thing. 
So I'm going to copy this and paste it so I don't have to do it again. And that should be the correct location. Now I want to create an object. I want to create a board block on the layer pieces. And these are going to be the same coordinates. So I'm going to hit done so I can copy my X. Then I'm going to go back and copy my Y. So if this point has a dead block, I'm going to create a board block in the same location. Then I want that board block that I just created, set frame, because I want the same color that the original had, to be equal to the dead block dot animation frame. And let's go ahead and take the rotation so set angle also equal to dead blocks dot angle. Then what I want to do is I want to go back up to my dead blocks and add a blank sub event there because I want it to happen after both of the loops. What I want is for the dead blocks to be destroyed. So after I've gone through and put board blocks everywhere a dead block exists, I can remove all my dead blocks. I'm going to go to debug layout to test to see if this works. So right now you'll see that we have one block, I have one board, and I have the board block off to the side. We'll add that to destroy at start event here in just a second. So I'm going to resume this. I'm going to hit space to put it at the bottom. And now we'll see that there's no dead blocks. They existed for a short amount of time, but now I have my board blocks that one off the screen, and then I have one separate instance for each square here. Now that I have individual squares, I can remove them individually as well. So let's go back up to our start of layout and destroy that extra board block. At the bottom, I'm going to create a new group. And that is for removing a row. Right after I destroy my dead blocks, I want to go to system and do set group active remove row to activate it. That way this is not running all the time. Just whenever we get to the end of having our dead blocks converted to board blocks, we're going to turn remove row on. So it's going to go check to see if any rows need to be removed. And at the end of this, we're going to turn itself back off. This will make the game run faster and smoother. And so that we do not make this video too long, let's go ahead and stop here and we will implement our remove row group next time.